This short video explains how computers change the overflow flag when adding or subtracting two signed integers represented in two's complement. Let's first quickly review what is two's complement. Most modern computers use two's complement to represent signed integers. This number wheel lists 5 bit 2's complement integers. Positive numbers and 0 are simply represented as themselves. Negative numbers are represented in this way. Invert every bit of its positive equivalent, and then add 1. For example, suppose we want to find out how to represent negative 3 and 2's complement. First of all, we translate positive 3 to binary. In the first step, we flip every bit. In the second step, we add 1. The final result is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, which is the 2's complement representation of negative 3. When adding two signed numbers represented in 2's complement, overflow can only happen when adding two numbers of the same sign, but getting a result with a different sign. There are two possible scenarios. In the first scenario, add two positive numbers, but produce a negative result. In the second scenario, add two negative numbers, but get a positive result. This shows an example of the first scenario, in which overflow is generated, when the sum of two positive number, is negative. Suppose we are adding 12 and 5. The result is 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, which represents negative 15 and 2's complement. This happens because the correct result 17 is larger than the maximum representable number 15. In the following, we will show how to detect overflow by using the number wheel. Numbers can be added or subtracted by moving round the number wheel, clockwise for adding a positive number or subtracting a negative number, and counterclockwise for subtracting a positive number, or adding a negative number. In this 5-bit example, overflow happens when the movement crosses the boundary between 15 and negative 16. As explained in the previous slide, adding two numbers of the same sign must produce a result of the same sign. Otherwise, Overflow has happened, indicating the result has fell out of the representable range. Similarly, subtracting two signed integers generates overflow if the result is too large or too small to fit into the representable range. For example, subtracting 7 from negative 13 should produce negative minus 20, which is out of the representable range. Accordingly, this subtraction generates overflow. We can detect overflow by using the number wheel. If subtracting a positive number, we move along the wheel counterclockwise. On the other hand, if subtracting a negative number, we move along the wheel clockwise. Whenever the movement crosses the boundary between 15 and negative 16, overflow is generated, and the overflow flag is set. This figure shows both the general purpose registers and the special purpose registers on ARM Cortex M microprocessors. The overflow flag is stored in one of the special purpose registers. This register is called Program Status Register, or called PSR. This shows the content of the Program Status Register. The V bit represents the overflow flag. If V is 1, overflow has happened. If V is 0, no overflow has been generated. This table shows the meaning of the overflow flag when ALU adds or subtracts two signed numbers. If the overflow flag is 0, the result of signed addition or signed subtraction is correct. However, if the overflow flag is 1, the result of signed addition or signed subtraction is incorrect. Application software has to check whether or not overflow is generated 
in order to prevent erroneous results. It is interesting to compare the overflow flag and the carry flag. The reason causing the difference is that we need a carry flag for adding two unsigned numbers and a borrow flag for subtracting two unsigned numbers. ARM Cortex M microprocessors choose to use the same flag bit to represent both the carry flag and the borrow flag. Specifically, carry equals not borrow. See this tutorial for detailed explanation. Please visit the book website for more materials.